What's going on, fam? Alex Schlinski here for the Anti-Hustler Weekly Show. Today, we are going to be talking with Brad Quintana of Mailbox Power, telling you how to 10x your agency using direct mail. Yes, that is right. We are going back to the basics, back to traditional media, because this is the way you are going to differentiate yourself from the sea of people doing ads and cold emails and cold calls. This is an incredible, amazing opportunity that you have, and Brad and his amazing team have made it incredibly simple simple for you to utilize in an extremely cost-effective way to make a whole bunch of money, which is why you come to the Anti-Hustler Weekly Show. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Brian Downard, daddy of now two baby girls. Congratulations, Mr. Downard. Thank Hope you. you're doing good. How are you, bud? I'm good. Hey, oh, uh, you know, living the dream, but hanging in there at the same time. <laughs> Brad, uh, every session we start, Brad's, uh, Brian's always like, I'm living the dream, but since the baby, it's like more like I'm I'm trying to be alive. I'm there. I'm here. He, I have I have arrived. Is kind of where we're at. Brad, really good to have nice you, man. Brian. So hey, what only eight for being more here. kids to go, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> zero more to go. No more. We'll see. <laughs> we hey, we're from Utah. We have big families out here, so six is like the norm. So Mormon, more, <laughs> uh, we got a Mormon and a Jew on the call. There's a lot of babies coming, guys. That's how it works. All right. <laughs> Uh, we're here to talk today about mailbox power. Brad, as we just kind of get rolling, first and foremost, let's just get right to the rip of it. What is mailbox power? Why should people even be interested in listening to this podcast to the show today? Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about even what what people, I guess their impression of direct mail and gifting is all about. Let's start with that. Um, I mean, most people that we talk to right now, you know, or a lot of people have kind of the inclination that it doesn't work anymore. Uh, nobody checks their mailbox. It's too expensive. It's too hard. I got to hire a graphic and copywriter, right? Co graphic designer to go ahead and make everything. Uh, it's too time consuming. I got to hire staff, right? In actuality, it's not any of those things when you automate it. So what we are, what Mailbox Power is, is it is a platform where we automate all your direct mail. And I'm talking about everything from postcards, letters, you name it to all your personalized gifting, which is a game changer, which we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. Yeah, and I think one of the coolest things that I've seen, again, we will get into some of the details later, but um, just the integration with high level in terms of like marrying old and new and bringing an old school form of media and advertising, being able to merge it with things like workflows. So for any of you inside of high level, when a client reaches a certain milestone or a certain event or trigger happens, you can set that up. So they're gifted automatically. And it's incredible where you don't have to like have this big manual process. So I thought that was such a cool part. And there's so many other benefits to that. Um, and I appreciate that. That's a very important reason to be here for sure. Before we go into this, Brad, you and I spoke a little bit briefly about, um, yeah. some of how you got to this point before the show. I would love personally, cause I know everyone here watching live or in the replay, um, has some journey or story that got them to this point. Yours is really interesting. Like I shared, you piqued my interest. So, um, why don't you start a little bit about what you told me, starting with that story of the homeless teenager to now, yeah. you know, with your, I don't even know what the hell you call that award. We've got the... <laughs> Our click funnels award, but you got the super click funnels award. That's what we're gunning for next. So, what was that journey yeah. like a little bit? And how did you go from being homeless to, you know, eight figure business? Yeah, let me talk a little bit about my journey. I'll, I'll give you the shortened version so it's it doesn't take too much time. But yeah, at uh, my senior year, I was homeless. Um, still, you know, still participated in activities, played football, all that fun stuff. Actually, got into the fitness industry right after high school. Once I graduated, one of my football coaches. Uh, through my network, hired me uh, into a, a facility. I mean, it, you're talking, to, it's a huge facility, 67,000 square foot facility, huge gym, huge operation, super excited about it, you know, jumped right in there. And uh, by the time I was 19 years old, I was making six figures. So pretty blessed to to be able to have that opportunity because wow. it kind of, it really kind of kickstarted my life, right? It kickstarted everything because there was no plan B for me. No plan B, no you know, there wasn't any, anybody that I could rely on or fall back on. It was, it was me, you know, I was playing A, B, C, you name it. So, uh, once I started making some good money, I wanted to invest it. I actually read that rich dad, poor dad, you know, book from Robert Kiyosaki, everybody in there. Yeah. I think everybody has read that book. Um, it sparked me onto real estate investing. So at 19 started investing into real estate, uh, became an investor at 22, went full time, um, got into the training side of it, became a real estate trainer, speaker, author, um, started a tech product within, um, within my company at the time, which is essentially how I met mailbox power because I wanted to integrate 
the direct mail aspect into my software. So it's kind of crazy how it all worked out. I mean, I saw the value in direct mail because look, let's face it, as digital marketers, we all do text, phone, like the telesales side of it. We do uh, emails, right? We're, we're all pushing, you know, to these clients trying to, to get attention, say, hey, you know, I'm here, this is me. You know, but one of the people, and I guess one of the most forgotten things that you can do to be able to get noticed is direct mail. You know, if you look at the statistics right now, 93% of the new age millennials, they're actually, they're, they're, they're checking their, in, their mailbox. They love it. They think it's the coolest thing ever because they never had it. They grew up in the digital age, right? So, you know, seeing the value or the writing on the wall that this was going to be something that was, was, you know, with a little bit of technology mixed in with it, that this could be a, a great avenue for, you know, my people, our people, you know, these digital marketers that this is, this is what we do. This is what we're expert experts in, you know, provide value within mailbox power to, to bring the physical into the digital world. And that was our, our whole game plan going into it. So I saw the writing on the wall early, um, you know, met with the founder, which is, is Justin Biggs, amazing guy. Um, one of the best product, uh, you know, software developers out there that I've ever met. So when I saw this, I was like, this is a game changer. This is going to be awesome for the digital age um, and the digital in marketing industry. I've got to be a part of this. And so we linked up, came up with some different models and, you know, fast forward to today. I mean, we've, we've done really well. So. I love it, man. Uh, I, I can see that. Have that. Go ahead, Brian. For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I just kind of, building for first of all thank you for sharing that i love the story and something that i like to at least tell myself is when you know what the bottom looks like and you're not afraid of what the bottom is it creates so much potential for there to be massive upside because if you know you can go from homeless to making six figures and you know what it takes to do that it's not as scary to take risks so i love that and i appreciate that um in terms of some of the beliefs uh, you touched on briefly at the beginning that people have around direct mail um i'd love to just kind of unpackage some of those. And I think the biggest one, um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, it doesn't work anymore because it's old. It, like we should be focused online. It's what I'm probably going to hear most people say. I don't know if that's what you're hearing as well. What would you, what would you say to that? Well, I'd say- Look at my award, bitch. That's what you'd say, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing, like, and we'll get into that some more, but we, you don't even have to take my word for it. You look at companies like Forbes writing articles about how to use the physical to get noticed in the digital age, like that is the thing right now. It's just that most people are still, you know, trying to grasp the idea of, again, too expensive. Do I, I need a graphic designer? I need to hire all these people to deploy it. And they don't know that because they're thinking of, hey, I got to do this myself, right? I got to yeah. hire a team. I know a guy, no joke, that I met at GHL because we were at the event. And he literally moved his office next to the post office, signed a five-year lease, hired somebody just so that he could send gifts because he saw the value in it. His whole paradigm changed once he started doing the personalized gifting, the welcome boxes, things like that, right? Because his, his churn went down, his, I mean, he, his loyalty went up, right? And, and that's what it's all about. But he literally moved his whole office next to the post office. We met him there. He's like, dude, I literally just signed a, a five-year lease like a month ago. Like, where the heck have you guys been? And that was the thing that was honestly the theme of GHL is where have you guys been this whole time? I've needed you. Mm. Right. So that told us that was a big aha moment for us where it was like, you know what, we're in the right place. You know, the vision and the, and the, the idea of bringing this into the digital marketing, you know, space with all the high, high levelers that are just amazing people there. I mean, it was such a great event to, to be able to get the word out about us. It's obviously where we met you guys. Um, but you know, it's just really cool to, to conversate about something that's new, bring value to the industry and, and do something different. Again, you guys, this is the eighth pillar of communication that you have within Go High Level right now, which is awesome, right? You, you have about seven pillars that you can communicate with right now. This is the eighth that nobody wants to go spend $20 million on an award-winning, you know, facility to be able to deploy what we do, you know, awesome. better yet, you could actually white label, you could just work with us, you know, directly, which is you know, been a, a, a really cool thing for the high levelers in the community. So, and I think I didn't want to bury the lead, but I think that's one of the coolest aspects of mailbox power is that it directly fits into high level. So it's not another software. I feel like the concept yes. for agencies in the space now, Brad, it's like pretty much it's had like a 90% adoption rate. It's so rare for Brian Ryder to see anyone that's not using high level. Right. And so any concept of adding on an additional software is such a headache, but 
Mailbox Power actually works inside of High Level and you could white label it for your clients. It's an unbelievable yes. tool, right? And, and I wanted to leverage this because I shared it at my event that, you know, Willie came to our event to speak at, you know, one of the salespeople and the, the leader of the white label uh, side of Mailbox Power. And I shared this story, Brad, about how I grew my agency with uh, direct mail before Mailbox Power was a company and how much easier it would be now using it. And I want to give this case study to everyone so that they can feel more comfortable and confident in using Mailbox power because I don't think I've actually told you this yet, Brad, but we're doing it live right now. When my wife and I started our personal injury attorney agency, after we worked in our network, we thought like, how can we get in front of people? And the only way I knew how to do that was either going in person or sending postcards. Now, going in person is exhausting and very, uh, you know, creates a huge amount of audacity and fear and stress. And I liked doing it, but I couldn't go to anyone outside of my local area unless I was driving many hours, which I didn't want to do. And so what we did was I thought of a way that I can get in touch with someone in a unique way. And so, Brad, I bought manila envelopes like they would get their case files in. And I bought from vat19.com, which was kind of this like a uh, novelty website where you could buy like large gummy worms and huge gummy bears. And they had one particular thing on that website that was a massive confidential stamp the size of a manila envelope. And it was supposed to be for like a murder mystery type dinner thing. But I thought this would be perfect to stamp on the manila envelopes because I would assume that the paralegals or office managers are going to immediately push it over to their actual attorney. And so Sharon and I bought mm -hmm. nice map paper and put together a simple one pager like, got you. This is how marketing works. We get you more cases. Would you like sign up with us? Here's the special you know, link. I don't think even QR codes was a thing then. It was just like, call me at this number. And I would only get two types of calls. Brad, which was one, never fucking mail me again. Um, that was, uh, you know, we did get some of those. And two, yeah. was like, that was the smartest marketing I've ever seen. And we got a few clients from it. The reason why we stopped doing it is because we had to physically like mail them out. And I have the worst handwriting in the world. So my wife had to literally write our name and address and their name and address on every single postcard that we did. I think we sent out maybe a couple hundred and got a few clients from it. But Mailbox Power does this all for you. Can you explain to the people on this call and people watching the replay how they can leverage Mailbox Power to generate a similar outreach campaign like the one I'm talking about with your company in a much easier, more effective way? Yep. And you brought it up, you know, just in that, in what you were saying as well, we're fully integrated within high level, which makes this entire process seamless for all the high levelers that are here on this, on this zoom. Um, but we really kind of break it down three different ways, right? So kind of like what we were talking about, Alex, like most people are like, gosh, how could I use mailbox power? One, you could use it for prospecting Two, you could use it for client retention and three, you could use it for building relationship. So to what you're, to what you're saying, it's really the client retention side of it. You know, a lot of us are bringing clients on, whether it's a, a SaaS product or a coaching product or something along those lines. And we jump right into the business aspect of it, right? Like we, we get them into their sessions, we start the coaching and we, we really just get, you know, right into the business side of it. But we really don't have time sometimes to create that connection with them before they get started. So to what you were saying, like sending a, a welcome gift or a gift box and creating an automation where, Let's say, for instance, like, you know, let's say I send him something like this. You guys see that? No way. That is too <laughs> funny. That is hilarious. So I was going to see if you noticed Brad it. I was going to start drinking and be like, Brad K. Hey, That's hey, but, but you think about that. Something like that, like even you, Alex, like how does that make you feel, man? Like seeing something like that. If I were to send that to you in a little box with a journal with your name on it or something cool as one of my clients, would you be like, that's rad. Like I that's, that. that's pretty that's awesome. cool. Right. It makes you feel good. And not only that, it increases your churn because, you know, look, we're helping a lot of different businesses, a lot of different personalities, financial situations. We're going to have those instances where we have hiccups along the way. Right. Brian, like when you're talking with people, like I'm sure every now and again, you, you said something and maybe there was some sort of a miscommunication the way that it was taken. And it creates a hiccup along the way when you're, you're teaching and training somebody, it happens. Right. So what this does is, you know, instead of them canceling and, and getting upset about it, they're like, you know what, Alex takes care of me. He, he sent me a welcome gift. He does this. He does that for me. Like you, you now have a connection post-sale that, you know, when something does happen, they're like, no, I, like I'm going to give Ad Alex more of the benefit of the doubt versus immediately going towards, you know, I spent this money 
and I need to hurry up and cancel because it, it didn't happen exactly like it, it was told it was going to happen in the first session or something along yes. those lines, right? That happens with all of us as digital marketers, right? This takes that away. It, like I said, decreases churn. It makes a first impression. Think about it this way. When was the last time Netflix sent you a welcome gift or, or something cool on your birthday in the mail? I mean, everybody has Netflix, right? We spend so much money on, on those types of things. How many of those companies send anything to you just to say thank you? Never happens, right? Not so one time. Not the one client time. retentions, yeah, not one time. I mean, the client retention side of it is so huge because we all get hyper-focused on making, like generating leads to make sales. But what about keeping those sales that you make? Because I'm telling you right now, it's a lot more depressing to make it, think you got to sell and then a week later, that sale cancels. I mean, that takes the wind out of your sale really fast, right? But you start doing things like this to create a connection, they don't cancel, right? They just don't. And usually within about, what's funny is, is when we talk about the, the client retention side of it, and then also getting into the building relationships, which is the other thing, like I said, three things, prospecting, client retention, and building relationships. Because then you kind of transfer that into the building the relationship side of it, which is, Greeting cards, birthday cards, special occasions. You know, if I if I sent something to you, Alex, that, you know, maybe it was this mug with a little candy gram inside of it, and it was a gift card that said, hey, here's a, here's here's two movie tickets for you to, to take your wife on a date. Love that. Man, thanks for being my client. Thank you. That'd be pretty cool, right? It's the and best it adds value to it. Yeah, it adds value to your program, right? Now, now you're building relationships for the long term because their most special day is their birthday. I mean, how many birthday cards or gifts do you think they get in the mail right now? I mean, just let's just think about it. Other than outside of your family, what do you get on your birthday right now? Netflix sent me an email saying my price increased. <laughs> but just, happy I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, happy birthday. Pay me more, right? Oh, That's God. Hilarious. It's incredible. That'd be good to send right? the clients, right? Like, hey, happy birthday. Our prices are going up. Just kidding. Don't yeah. do that. And um, here's, some, here's some brownies to, to take take that ease off. No, I'm just joking. But yeah, but seriously, yeah. like somebody, something on their special date or what about uh, client anniversaries, right? Like you've been with us for six months or, or checkpoints. Like I have a, a, a client of ours right now that he's gamified his whole, whole coaching process with direct mail, which is freaking rad. So like before a session, he'll actually send something out that that kind of, like a preview of what the session is with a QR code that can take them to a video that actually allows them to, to be engaged and ready for that session, right? Where it becomes more of a Q and a session in those trainings versus just always going right into the teaching. And then, cause they don't know what they don't know sometimes, right? When you're teaching somebody or, or I'm just talking specifically on a coaching client, but now they go in a little bit more prepared with better questions because you, you you did something that's automated. You used direct mail to do it. It still feels like the perception of, of something that's one off that you're doing that for them and that you're taking care of them. You're making sure that they're following along, that these are checkpoints within their process, right? So gamifying the whole coaching side of it, we've started seeing that and that's that's been huge. And you can automate that whole process, right? With your clients, make sure that they're doing the things that you're telling them because that's how they're going to be successful. And if they're successful, do they cancel? They don't. Yeah. And, and so. there's just so much more margin for error. Like you said that they give you, we call we talk about something called the like, no trust factor. Like how much someone likes you, knows you and trusts you it plays a massive influence on whether or not they buy from you and continue to buy from you. Right. And this idea of um, like endearing yourself to an internet stranger when there's a million other people, especially in the agency land, making crazy, ridiculous offers and your clients get very flighty, right? So giving yourself more like, more um, trust just gives you more margin for error in those campaigns. So I love that. Um, it's funny because as I hear some of these, um, I don't consider myself someone who has shiny object syndrome. I feel like I'm reasonably focused, but I do hear things that pop out to me once in a while. I'm like, oh my gosh, that'd be so cool to implement. I'd love to do that. And as you're saying this, this idea of gamifying coaching, I'm immediately like globbing onto that. So in this theme though, of like people who are here watching again on the live or the replay, thanks everyone, by the way, uh, 16 of you hanging out here live, love it. Um, what would you say is a, they need to be in a certain position or have in their business before they consider this? Is there maybe someone who wouldn't be right for doing this right now, who should avoid this as a shiny object? And then who's someone who's like, no, you absolutely need this in your business. You need to be considering doing this. How do you are help you them ask, kind of decide sorry, whether or not this is a good move for them? Right way. Say that again. 
What was the question? Hey, how do you determine, uh, how do you help someone determine whether or not this is the right time for them to consider doing something like this? Well, if they already have clients, it's always the right time to start building up connection and, and building those long-term relationships because at the end of the day, we live in a digital world where loyalty just isn't that common. It's easy. There's so many, so many opportunities to move on, to move on to the next person or the next company. I mean, I see people that buy high ticket programs all day long. And next thing you know, they're following somebody else and not really following the person they spent all the money with. Like that happens all the dang time. Right. So yes. I think, and, and it typically starts with the loyalty side of it. Right. Like if I'll, I'll throw this out there and I'm not going to say any names, but think about it this way. You get a gift from somebody with a say you know, their name. Or, okay. I won't. <laughs> no, no, no way. No, no way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, like they send something out there that was like expired products that you know that they just had to get rid of. It's like, what kind of impression are you making for your Gross. clients? That's wild, right? So those are things that are like big no-nos. Like don't do those types of things because you're starting the relationship and then you lose that credibility, even though they spent that money and then they work towards, they, they start following somebody else that they feel maybe fall within their their moral values, I guess, or you know, just, just from that standpoint, like how they take care of their clients, because you learn a lot from a company, you know, not before the sale, but post-sale. Right. And that's where I could even say, like, even when I was, because again, I've been in the digital marketing space for 20 years, speaker trainer, like doing all the same things, coaching. And I could honestly say, if I went back to day one, these are things that I would have implemented in my business to make sure that I'm, I'm taking care of, I'm oh, like, I'm overdoing it. Like I'm taking care of my client that much more because that person means so much more to me than just a, a sell, right? Which is, is a, and you got to be genuine about it. You know, I watched some of your videos, Alex, you talked about being genuine with your clients and not being fake. I 100% agree. This is how you do it. Take care of your clients, right? You want them for the long term. You want them to be repeat customers. Or if you have a monthly reoccurring program, you don't want them to ever quit. One right? additional step that I would also be considerate of too, that I think is like a pretty aggressive model is if someone's worked with you for a long time and they cancel, also sending them a gift as a thank you for being a long-term client gives you such a better chance of reactivation. When we lose clients in POD, which inherently, of course, that happens, um, you know, we're really proud to say that when people leave, like over 90% of the people that have left have had an exceptional experience. And we've had in the past year, I think more than, I think it was more than 15 people in 23 that came back. Just today alone, I think he's on this call, Kevin Fairbanks had a conversation with Brian. He was a client a few years ago and he wants to come back. There's something really special about that experience of like, giving someone a great experience to the point that they feel comfortable that either they want to stay a long time or come back is, is absolutely amazing. And I think that's just another thing that you're kind of piquing my interest on. We're, we're talking a lot about retention plays, right? I, I want to talk to you about what you think acquisition plays are for mailbox power. Cause I think what you're, I think one of the key values of, of mailbox power is everyone in the space is doing everything digital, cold emails, cold mm -hmm. calling, uh, advertising, LinkedIn prospecting, social media marketing, but no one is doing direct mail, man. Just, just no one is. How can someone use mailbox power to get more sales opportunities for their business? I would love to hear your thoughts on that, Brad. So, and again, the client retention side of it plays a big role in it. You get a lot of referrals from your sphere of influence just off that alone. Absolutely. But one of the things we did on the prospecting side of it is, is we made postcards unlimited free. Right. So really the makeup and the composition of the card, regardless of colors or how many you do, whether it's one, five or 10,000, because at the end of the day, we don't know how many leads we're getting in this week, tomorrow, next month. Like you just don't know sometimes. Right. Facebook might change their algorithm and you get five leads tomorrow. Like you just don't know. Right. So whether you're sending five, 10, 10,000, 100, it doesn't matter. Like we do free unlimited postcards because we know that that is is something that, you know, sometimes they end up in the trash. Right. First couple, you know, usually by the third, you make an impression is, is typically the, the old mindset behind it, which I'll show you how we change that. But that's kind of the old school methodology of it is, is how many impressions does it take for somebody to follow up and use this postcard? So we thought, okay, well, out of everything, marketing usually costs the most money. We're going to make that one of the cheapest aspects on our platform for people to go out there and market. We know if we help somebody market with using, utilizing unlimited free postcards. And another thing like, even our list builder, our lead list builder, we, if you don't have a list right now, we have a lead list builder inside of our platform that you could use to start targeting your ideal client. Wow. Because some of the people, it's kind of like what you were asking, Brian, kind of back to that. You asked a question about, 
you know, when, it, when is the right time? Are they, you know, do you have clients that aren't ready now or, you know, that would hold anything holding them back? Really, the answer is no. If you have a list right now, which most of you guys do, cool, use that list. If you guys want to build a new list of certain or specific types of businesses, like you are working with law firms, cool, we can build a list specifically off law firms that are your target clientele that you can start sending to immediately. And you don't rent the list, you own the list. And you can get them for as, as little as eight cents a lead. That's as cheap as it gets, right? Yeah, from a, from a so marketing- you talk about, you, Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, please finish. I was going to say, you talk about like using using direct mail as a way to, to target. Yes, that's the first thing. But really the game changer in this whole process is, is by using our QR codes. And not just a regular QR, a dynamic QR code. So this is something that's really cool. People usually click on a QR code. It takes them to whatever URL you have embedded into it, right? And then usually you're waiting for them to look at whatever you have, get enticed to fill out that opt-in form, and then you get a lead from there. What's cool about us is being that the lead is already, you know, the leads are already in there, it puts their information in the QR code. So essentially, as soon as they click on the QR code, it sends you a notification that, let's say, you know, Brian clicked on postcard number two. So now there's a couple of things you can do with that. One, you could immediately use that as a way to call. So if I said, hey, Brian, I just wanted to follow up with you, uh, see if you got the postcard that, that I sent out to you, I can literally use that as a way or an entry point to start a conversation because I know you clicked on it and you're going to be like, wow, yeah, actually I just clicked on your QR code. I was looking at the values. Oh, cool. So you're looking to sell a house. Let's say you, you, you're, I'm a realtor, right? Hey, so cool. You're looking at my value page. Are you looking to get the value of your house? Are you thinking about selling? And then I could start a conversation from there just off a postcard, which has never been able to, to be done before until now, right? So now QRs and technology has, has really gotten to this point where we can take that into the digital side of it. Now, here's the game changer of it all. What if you could put a QR code on a postcard, they click it, you use that QR code as the opt-in, and it immediately tags them into whatever nurturing campaign that you have, phone, email, text from there. How cool would that be? Yeah, it's it's right. crazy that some of the things that you can connect the dots uh, through high level to make all of this work really seamlessly. Um, and just kind of, Maybe a bit of an aside, obviously still really related to what we're talking about. Will, who was able to join us in Tampa. I missed that, unfortunately. I love the quote he had where it's like, this is still the one thing you can't unsubscribe from, right? Uh, sending direct mail. You can unsubscribe from anything else, but this is still, I'm not going to say unregulated, more unregulated than a lot of other lead gen channels, which leaves room for people to abuse it. That's not what we're recommending here. But I think, like, not I think, I'm, I'm curious, I'm wondering from your perspective, um, how can someone you know, take baby steps towards starting this, towards taking advantage of this medium? Uh, is it really as simple as like, get a list together, sign up for mailbox power, or I'm sorry, flip those, sign up for mailbox power, get your list. Do you guys have examples of past campaigns that have worked? Should we go to chat GPT to uh, create some kind of direct response marketing? Let, like, what do you think is the lowest hanging fruit for someone just to get started and do this? Well, I always tell people, look, if you already have clients, that's the the low hanging fruit right there. You sure. know, sending something to your clients, building up, continually building relationships with them. Um, I always say that the the current clients and the current people that you have in your sphere is always the best list because they know a little bit about you. They've been in your program. They they've had success. That's that's really the low hanging fruit for most people. Um, but. Again, if let's say, for instance, I'll give you an example. I have I have sell, an internal sales team here and I have a sales guy that after like a, a call that he generates or like a, a, a call that he jumps on, if he doesn't make the sale right there, he sends out a nice to meet you with the two pack of brownies and then also a QR code that sends him to his booking page to get scheduled again. Here's the wild part, okay? Because he's already pitched mailbox power because that's what he's selling here. He's already pitched mailbox power. And once he sends that, that nice to meet you with the two, two, um, the two brownies, I'm telling you, like he did that on a Thursday, it went out. And by the way, we send next day, which is a game changer. So you have an automation that goes out the next day. But who makes the, the brownies day. is the most important question. I Just do. I the recipe is brownies. it, Quintana. That's a ratatouille. No. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we, we have them made awesome. here locally. But they're amazing. It's, it's actually one of our best selling products are our brownies. Um, and we are getting Rice Krispie treats right now, which are going to be awesome. So uh, just awesome. know that. 
Um, that's my thing. I'm not a chocolate guy, but man, it is. I mean, we send pallets and pallets of brownies every single day. I know. I'm not. A, it's weird. I'm not a chocolate guy. You're really. You don't know. But I love Rice Krispies. Hurting my feelings right now. <laughs> what I want to ask you, Brad. But yeah. Is, so he sends that out, and me. literally, so he did this scenario. He Go sent ahead. it out, and by Tuesday, the person literally didn't even book a call. They just signed up and said, "Hey, hey Rylan, I, I'd already, you know, I'm, I'm all signed up. What's the next step?" <laughs> it was so awesome. And that is proven and that works, but it's just an automated trigger too. He just triggers it, boom. If he clicks on within high level, right? He has his pipeline, clicks on that it didn't sell, boom. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the call. You know, and if you have any other questions, click on this. Let's go ahead and get booked. And then the brownies come in and then usually you're getting text. The one thing that's really cool too is the fact that you're getting text messages from your client. Like I get them all day long. Like anytime I send just even, like I said, as simple as that is, it's less, it's about 10 bucks for that, that gift. It's $10 to make your client happy. That's so cheap, right? Versus a cancellation or versus somebody that didn't sign up. He yeah. sends that out. It cost him 10 bucks. They get it. He starts getting text messages. I get this. So I went to NAR, the National Real Estate, uh, it's a National Association of Realtors. And we, we tested this out there just by clicking on a QR code and sending them a nice to meet you. I was blown up with text messages, voicemails, you name it. Like it was crazy. Incredible. It's something that simple that you didn't think that was that valuable for 10 bucks could be that valuable and that important to your business. It's absolutely wild. Yeah. And when you look at your cost per acquisition on like for a normal digital marketing agency running paid ads, it's like probably in the ballpark of 800 to $1,200. And when you hear $10 per like lead out loud, you're thinking in your brain like, oh, that's expensive, but compared to what? Yep. Expensive compared to what? Imagine you could cut your acquisition yep. costs in half just because you were so much different and interesting and fun, better than what everyone else is doing out there. So I love this as a way to differentiate yourself and stand out. And frankly, a starting to become saturated marketplace with uh, really yeah. people just leaning on the value of their offer and their guarantee that usually is bullshit alone rather than actual value. So that I love piece this. That, that Brian was talking about, Brad, there related to market saturation if you can zig when everyone else is zagging, right? Like eventually based off of the success of Mailbox Power, pretty bluntly guys, and I'm saying this more to everyone else watching because Brad already knows this and he's like a not an egotistical guy, but I'm going to speak for him. They will take over the marketplace, right? They're going to be committed to that. More and more people that use high level are going to be using Mailbox Power. Meaning the more and more people that use it, right? The less new it is. It doesn't become less effective. It's just less new. More things that are new create easier sales. Things that are not as new is not as easy to sell, right? We've already discussed on this call how to retain clients using direct mail. We've talked about how to make more money and get clients through direct mail to potentially get clients to come back if they canceled with direct mail. There's also white label methodologies that we haven't even spoken about today that they have an entire section for that Willie Grader covers on how to use high level or excuse me, mailbox power within your high level to sell that to your clients so they can start sending postcards to their clients, which is something we didn't even discuss today. Brad, all of yep. these amazing methodologies that mailbox power has, how does someone get started? What is the easiest way to get started today, to start implementing it, to utilize it so that they don't fear, wow, there's so many methods. How do I make sure I use the right thing? How do they just start with right now? What do I do today, Brad? What is the best thing for them to do right now? Here's the, here's the cool thing is we, we actually do booked appointments with everybody that comes through, whether you sign up and we do a booked appointment after for a strategy session, or you, you still have questions about mailbox power before it, you can go book a call with one of our team members. We'll actually sit down with you and really ask you the question, the necessary questions and figure out what your necessary needs are now, right? Like, I don't want to talk about all this, all the cool, like these other things that we do. If it's not the thing that you need now, we talk about the necessary need. What is that? And you got to be prepared to answer some of those questions because it's really the best way for us to help. You. Like the best way for us to serve you as a company is by us understanding what your company is, what your niche is as an agency, as a SaaS partner, whatever it is, like help us understand you. And we'll tell you, hey, these are the things that we see that are working right now. Like we're not bashful about that. Like we want to help everybody. Like I said, I'm, I come from this industry. I love this industry. That's why I was so adamant about bringing this to this industry. This is, this is, these are my, you guys are my people. <laughs> so I wanted to show everybody in this community, like how valuable and what, what I saw into it, what I saw in it and why I'm even here. Right. Because if you think about it this way, there, the perception and value and effort 
versus maybe a, a with like personalized gifting or direct mail versus a phone call, a text, and email. Like, what are you going to feel more valued? A package that I sent with the greeting card and two brownies or, or a personalized gift or an email that I said, hey, thanks for joining. Yeah, right. without without question. It's 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 a no brainer to, to be considering something like this. So, you know, I know people, we've got a lot of people hanging out here on the whole call. No one really dipped. I think maybe one person, which is great for retention. And in terms of like, obviously we're talking about here is super valuable. So where can they go to book a call if they're interested yep. in learning? So more? just go to Mailbox Power. You'll see it right on the front of the page. It'll say book a call, click on that, schedule a time. One of our team members will get on, learn a little bit more about your business, figure out what's going to be the best way to serve you uh, as a client. And then we go from there, you know, figure out what the best option is. Cause here's the thing. We have a white label option. Is it the best fit for everybody? Maybe not, but it doesn't mean that you can't do this for your clients. Anyways, you guys are business owners. You want to take care of your clients. Even if you come in just as a client of ours, it still works. Right. So a few different ways. And that's another thing that we want to talk about. Like I said, prospecting, client retention, uh, building relationships. That's what this is all about. And it's funny, Alex, when, when you were saying, Hey, when everybody's zigging, you got a Zach. I am not even kidding you. That was the next thing that was coming out of my mouth. Dude, I got chills. I was like, holy crap, dude. Like we got ESPN going on. No, I'm just joking. ESP going on here. Except right? for not being a chocolate fan, but that's okay. I won't judge you for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, ju I'm definitely judging you for it. You sound it. like that's you're judging. Okay. That's a silently no. judging, except I'm expressing that I'm judging. But in general, <laughs> someone asked, by the way, Brad in the chat, do we get uh, brownies for being on this call? <laughs> that was amazing. Hey, I'll tell you what, you guys go book a call, meet with our team, and we'll do something special for you guys. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. Guys, we dropped the link here. And if you're watching this on replay in the show notes on our replay vault on YouTube, wherever, if you're seeing a, a short or clip that we're doing, you'll be able to grab it at go.mailboxpower.com. If you can't read the um Mug, it says Alex Shinsky's an asshole, which is hilarious. I think that's very funny. No, it uh, says awesome. That oh, is Oh, I can't true. read. I can't read. That was the problem. I couldn't read. I couldn't yeah. read. That was the that was the problem. Guys, thank you so much for giving us your time here. We always appreciate it. We're grateful for it. Brad, thank you to being part of this community and providing this amazing, incredible service. Guys, we're going to be promoting and referencing Mailbox Power quite a bit in our future Anti-Hustler Weekly Show calls. Definitely check this out. It is a huge opportunity to zig when you zag. You can save money for your actual lead generation. You can get more clients. You can keep your clients happy. You can create unique and special experiences. You can list build and send out to a bunch of cold prospects, brownies or Rice Krispies or mugs that say their name on it. You have unbelievable opportunity utilizing this platform. It is amazing. Don't just go straight back to LinkedIn prospecting or social media marketing. Give this a shot. It will be worth it. You will be a huge winner and get one of those awesome awards that Brad has. Brad, we appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for, for doing this with us. Yep. Can I just say one more thing? Big shout out to Alex, obviously Brian. I've spent some time with Alex. The guy knows his stuff. Somebody, and that's coming from somebody that's been doing this for a very, very long time, has great ideas. I appreciate you having me on here and, and having Mailbox Power as a company on here. I, I couldn't tell you how thankful I am to, to have met you. And uh, yeah, man, we're, we're excited to be working together for the long haul. So appreciate I appreciate it. that a lot. Yeah, man. Um, I guess I'll Thank wrap you. up this in that scenario because I always have to have the last word because, you know, I'm very egotistical and it's required. Totally joking. Um, kind of joking. It was kind of too true, which is painful, but whatever. That's okay. That's more of like a, a meta conversation. Um, Brad actually in Mailbox Power sponsored our event earlier this year, um, earlier this month, which was also earlier this year. Uh, at my house, we did POD Unplugged and we had William Grader come out, uh, Willie Grader, and he runs the, the white label side of this company. So if you guys book with him, dude's amazing, super intelligent, incredible person. We'll do another session with Willie. For those of you in POD or an agency alliance, we're going to make a training specific with Willie on how to white label this and maximize your success. So this is just the start of the relationship with Mailbox Power. We're excited about it. We're excited for all of you. We love all of you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Go book a call with Mailbox Power. Go.mailboxpower.com. Brian, love you, buddy. We'll see you on the next one, guys. You guys rock. Thank you.